Yo, what is up guys, your boys Ikage here with the movie for what if Naruto had the world. So quick announcement, I now have merch, so you guys can check out the link in the description and check out the store. We have shirts, hoodies, a bunch of stuff that I know you all will enjoy. But with that all said, let's just get right into the what if. Naruto has lived basically the same life as in canon up to when he was four, and on one snowy evening, Naruto was just taking a walk through a forest near the forest of death. Naruto had his scarf wrapped tied around his neck and he was about ready to go home because it was getting really cold. But then he heard the screams of a girl nearby and Naruto started walking through the bushes and huge piles of snow to see a group of four boys surrounding this girl with bluish black hair. The biggest of the kids said, You're a creep, ghost eyes. My mommy said your clan is the reason my dad's dead. And he hit Hinata across the face. She fell over into the snow with the bruises on her cheeks. And seeing this, Naruto didn't even think. He started balling up snow into his hand and threw it at the kids. And props to Naruto, he had a really good aim. He hit all of them right in the head. But the kids turned to Naruto and started walking towards him. Naruto backed up because he's scared thinking, what did I just get myself into? Naruto turned around to run but the snow was too high and he fell over. The largest of the kids in the group, I'd call him Biff, comment if you get the reference. He comes up and grabs Naruto by the back of the shirt and he lifted him up and throws Naruto to the side. And this is where two of the other kids hold Naruto up and Biff walks up to him and says, So the demon decided to show himself. What should I do with you? Naruto kept silent, but one of the other kids said, Biff, if we kill him, all the villagers will praise us. You know, they're always trying to catch Naruto and they always fail, so this is our chance. And Biff smiles ominously and said, You do have a point. He turned to Naruto and started running towards him and with his entire body put it into a punch square to Naruto's face. And Naruto closed his eyes anticipating the worst, but nothing happened. Naruto slowly opened his eyes and saw another hand holding Biff's fist and Biff winced in pain and said, what the hell is happening? And the other kids around thought Biff was going crazy or something, they didn't even see anything. Meanwhile, Naruto saw a huge muscular arm twisting Biff's fist into submission and it let go and went back into Naruto. Naruto was freaked out and Biff's friends were concerned so they let Naruto go and went to help him up. And as they were carrying him away, he said to Naruto, oh, I'll get you for this, still holding his hand in pain. While well, Naruto just stood there in disbelief of what just happened, and Hinata who was watching this whole scene play out, walked up to Naruto and bowed and said, thank you. But before he could say anything back, she ran off to the Hyuga compound. So Naruto walked home in confusion at what just happened. It seems like those bullies couldn't see it. He was confused, but... As the years go on, Naruto actually never had a similar encounter like that and basically forgot about that day. It's been 4 years since then and Naruto had taken on his canon personality and antics, you know being the knucklehead prankster people know him for. So, being 8, it's time for Naruto's first day at the academy and that morning Naruto had some instant ramen, you know, nothing better than that. And after he's finished up, he runs out of the house and gets to the academy in no time. And in class, Naruto walks in and he is excited, he wants to meet new people, but he walks in and everyone is just talking amongst themselves, just not acknowledging Naruto's existence. And they all go about their day and Naruto for a moment felt sad, but he quickly cheered himself up, you know, smacking his cheeks, pause, and went to sit down. So once he sat down, Naruto just waited and waited for the teacher to come into class and soon enough Iruka does and he walks into class and gets everyone's attention. He says, quiet down everyone, I'll be your sensei for your time at the academy, I'm Iruka and I hope you all get along. 
after his short speech, you know, Erica starts doing roll call, you know, saying Eno and she says here, Kiba, here, so on and so on. Then once he's finished, Iruka starts to plan out their day and the classes before lunch, they'll just be doing, you know, regular school stuff. Um, things like Ninja History, Ninja 101, eh, you know, things like that. But after lunch, they'll have a quick assessment of everyone's strengths and weaknesses and if they have time, a quick sparring match. So Iruka gets to the lessons and they're learning about Ninja 101. And the question for you guys is, what is the full name of a ninja tool that looks similar to a giant shuriken? So just imagine a shuriken and times the size by like four or five. And for bonus points, when was it first seen in the anime? The person I see answer it first gets pinned in the comments, so moving on, Iruka gets through the lesson and it was really basic knowledge, even Naruto found it easy to wrap his head around, but after lunch they had the assessment test I mentioned earlier. So Naruto and the others in the class walked outside following Iruka and they see all sorts of obstacles and things set up in the like courtyard area and Iruka started to speak. First will be a test of your speed through a common obstacles you know ninjas will find on almost every mission. And then four laps to test your endurance then sparring right after to see how you can you know fight while exhausted since the enemy can attack you when you're most vulnerable. Seeing all of this sort of overwhelmed all of them and a sweat ran down each of their foreheads like, isn't it a bit much? But Iruka was confident that everyone could make it through so he continued and then started putting everyone in pairs and the first two to go through was Naruto and Sasuke. All of the Sasuke fangirls were cheering him on and then Iruka said, begin, and they both start running as fast as possible through the obstacles, you know, with ledges to simulate tree branches and huge gaps, and it was immediately clear that Sasuke was beating Naruto with relative ease. He was smiling all happy since this isn't, you know, emo Sasuke, or at least yet. So Sasuke made it to the sparring uh, area before Naruto and Naruto he's on his like second lap and he's running off nothing but sheer willpower. He's completely exhausted at this point and he's pushing himself and Naruto manages to make it through and he drops on the ground as soon as he makes it with his tongue out and everything you know breathing rapidly. Iruka ran over to check on Naruto and asked if he was okay to continue and Naruto looked and saw Sasuke laughing at him on the other students making fun of him and Naruto gritted his teeth and said, yeah I can. And Naruto slowly started to get up and he was still tired as hell but wasn't going to look weak in front of everyone. So he got up and Iruka said, well okay, let's start. Sasuke, are you ready? And Sasuke nods and Naruto, are you ready? Naruto nods. Well, begin. And Sasuke run towards Naruto, taking advantage of his weakened state and it was like time stopped for Naruto. Naruto could hardly move his arms as Sasuke got closer and closer. Also, this isn't like anything to do with, you know, the world. This is just Naruto, you know, his mind slowing down. So as Sasuke got closer and closer, Naruto raised both his arms in a cross across his chest to take the blow from Sasuke. And Sasuke ran in to punch Naruto but Naruto didn't feel anything. But the bones in Sasuke's hand broke into bits, it was like he punched a cement wall. And at full force at that, Sasuke screamed in pain, like agonizing pain, and Naruto was confused until he looked down and saw a pair of hands in the same position as his. And seeing this reminded Naruto of the incident so long ago, these massive arms with golden armor on them. Naruto remembered the damage these could do and with adrenaline now coursing through his body, he pushed through fatigue and ran at Sasuke still holding who was still holding his limp arm. Now Naruto punched the air in front of him and the arms came out and punched Sasuke in his gut causing him to cough up blood and fall to the ground. Naruto said, you think you're so tough? I'll beat you with ease. And Naruto got ready to slam down his fist into Naruto's head, but Iruka came in and ran in like to stop Naruto just in time too because his hand was right above Sasuke's head. And Iruka pushed Naruto and said, it's fine Naruto, you win. 
But Iruko was speechless. He looked into Naruto's eyes and these were the eyes of a killer. Chills ran down his spine and he let Naruto go, scared for his life, honestly. And Naruto turned around and said, as he's walking away, get in my way again and I'll take you down too. Naruto walked towards the infirmary but collapsed before reaching it and he came back to his senses and remembered everything that just happened. You see, Naruto was just acting off his dormant instincts, his instincts to kill. And Naruto looked at his hand and said, was I really going to kill Sasuke? But then a face appeared out of Naruto's hand and this was the face of the world. It spoke to Naruto and before I continue, some of you might be saying, hold up, how is a stand talking to Naruto? Well, technically in this world, it isn't a stand, but bear with me. This is the only time I'm going to mention it. After this, it's just going to act as a regular stand. So the stand said, I am a demon sent from the Grim Reaper or as you Japanese call it, a Shinigami. So flash back to the death of both of Naruto's parents after, you know, sealing the QB. You know, Minato, he died, but before the Reaper disappeared, Kushina with her dying breath said, I want my son to live, please protect him. And the Grim Reaper took the sword out of his mouth and said, Kushina Uzumaki. For your clan to be able to create a jutsu capable of summoning me is truly amazing. So I grant you this. And from the reaper's stomach came a golden demon and he instructed it to protect the child. And the demon nodded and floated over to Naruto before turning invisible. Then the Shinigami finally disappeared and Kushina died. So I hope you guys like that explanation. I think it works because just like how no one can see the Reaper, you know, during the Reaper death seal, except the caster, I think that, you know, it's really the only way to make it work within the Naruto world. Yeah, I could have just used a stand arrow or said he was born with it, but I like to make life difficult for myself. Yay. But anyways, moving on. Then the demon says, my name is the world and I give you full control and the face disappeared. Naruto was truly confused to hear about, you know, the heroic acts of his parents. You know, he was pretty happy. The demon didn't mention their names or anything, but told him a few important things like its name and how to call for it, you know, whenever he needs it. So Naruto picks himself up after a bit of rest and made his way home where he stayed for the rest of the week, missing school, and during this time, Naruto learned how to summon the world on command. But whenever he does, it's not the entire body of it, just the top half, but you know, Naruto, he'll get there eventually. So when Naruto returned to school, people were rightfully scared of him. They didn't want to make Naruto mad because they saw how that worked out for Sasuke. He got messed up. But luckily, Naruto kept to himself and as he grew stronger, the more power he wanted. Nothing much happened that day of school. So after that, Naruto wanted to change up the fit a bit, you know. He went to a clothes store in the shopping district and he picked out some clothes similar to Dio, you know, yellow pants, a short unzipped jacket with a black undershirt. And Naruto went to pay for it, but it was way more expensive than he thought because the clerk raised the price just because it's Naruto, the quote unquote demon. And this pissed Naruto off. He said, you raise the price. And the quirk laughed and said, if you can't pay for it, get out of my store. And Naruto says, one day I'll own this damn store. And he summoned the world and punched the clerk out of the store and walked out wearing the new clothes. And Naruto laughed and said, once I'm a ninja, I'll rule this village. So fast forward five years and during this time, Naruto's personality has taken a drastic change, which is foreseeable when he has a actual demon within him. But yeah, Naruto lacks remorse for people in a fight, but also he's gotten a lot more smarter and calculating. This even shows in his grades because they've skyrocketed to second place, only being bested by Sakura because she literally lives in her school books. So to the graduation exams, Iruka comes into class and he starts to explain how the exam is going to work and he says it's actually going to be a pretty simple one, easier than any of the previous years. 
He says all you have to do is cast a clone and they'll average out your grades over the years to see who the rookie of the year and the kunoichi of the year is. So one by one, everyone goes up to the front of the class and casts some clones, you know, some of them are illusions while people like Sasuke, who are more advanced, have solid clones, but he can only make one. So Naruto, when it's his turn, he goes up and he says straight up, like, I can't do clones, I, I legit just can't. And everyone was ready to laugh at Naruto, like, how can you not do clones? But Naruto said to Iruka, you can come outside and see my very own special jutsu. And Iruka, you know, he decided to entertain Naruto's request since he's on the verge of pissing his pants. That's how scared he is of Naruto. So they go outside and Naruto points to Sasuke and says, in two seconds, I'll defeat you. And Sakura and Ino burst out into laughter saying, Naruto, let's be honest, you're not beating Sasuke, especially in two seconds. But Sasuke, he put his hand out in front of the two of them and said, uh, let's see what you got Naruto, because you're not the only one who's gotten stronger. And Naruto laughed and said under his breath, big mistake. They both get ready and Iruka begins the fight and Sasuke focused and used body flicker to get behind Naruto. But he said, you can move as fast as you want, but I have time on my side. Naruto screamed. <laughs> Time completely stopped and Naruto only had 2 seconds to act so he went behind Sasuke and with a swift karate chop to his shoulder took Sasuke down with ease then time resumed. Sasuke fell to the ground unconscious actually and the crowd was about to cheer for Sasuke because they saw how quickly he moved using the body flicker technique but Naruto within a second got behind Sasuke and took him down. Iruka was just standing there with his mouth wide open, he didn't know what to say and Naruto turned to him which made Iruka tense up and Naruto said, so I guess I'm the rookie of the year now and Iruka slowly nodded his head and said, yes, yes you are and Naruto turned back to the class and everyone you know, made a path for him, like stepped out of his way as he walked by. So soon enough, everyone returned to class and Iruka started to read off the list of the you know teams he just received from Hiruzen. So team 10, Choji, Shikamaru and Ino, team 8, Kiba, Shino and Hinata and team 7, Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura. Sakura started boasting about you know her being on a team with Sasuke but Ino said well enjoy Naruto on your team and started laughing. Sakura just realized this and sat back in her chair praying to the gods of the shinobi world that she doesn't die. So team 7 waits around for their Joni and Sensei Kakashi and while the other teams you know their senses reach in really no time. So let's switch perspectives to Kakashi you know let's see what he's doing. He's actually in the office of Hiruzen at the current moment and the both of them are talking about Naruto. So, Kakashi appears in Hiruzen's office and bows and says, you called me Hokage? And Hiruzen said, yes, I've been watching Naruto for quite some time now, and he was displaying some remarkable abilities, but I don't know what it is. And Kakashi questioned, what do you mean, can't you describe what he's doing? And Hiruzen got up and started pacing around the room and he said, that's the point, I can't. So I've put you in charge of his team to not only gather information on this, but I know you've always wanted to train the fourth son, so here's your chance. Kakashi bowed and said, I, I won't let you down, and walked out of the office. Hiruzen sat back in his chair and looked into his crystal ball, showing Naruto waiting in class, and he wondered, what are you hiding? So Kakashi arrives after only 30 minutes, which is you know pretty respectable for Kakashi, the guy that would take multiple hours to arrive, so this is early for him. So he gets into the class and he sees all you know the members of his team waiting. Of course they were you know irritated for waiting that long, but at least he's here. So Kakashi says to his team, meet me upstairs to you know do a little introduction. So Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura follow Kakashi as he goes to the top of the building. When they arrive on the top of the roof, Kakashi sits on one side while the others sit opposite to him. 
and he starts saying how he wants them to introduce themselves state their likes dislikes and goals for the future and kakashi he said he, he's going to go first he says well my name is kakashi hatake i don't want to disclose my likes or dislikes and i'll rather keep my goals to myself and the three were thinking wow that was really informative Th thanks but with Kakashi's bland speech out of the way, he points to Sakura to go first, and Sakura just says some regular Sakura stuff. Oh, um, um, her name is Sakura Haruno. She likes a, a certain someone while twiddling her fingers and looking at Sakura. Um, Sakura, looking at Sasuke, and she dislikes Ino and somebody else someone sitting really close like she's not even trying to be you know secretive about it she just looks dead at naruto and she says her goal is to be a good wife to a certain someone still twiddling her fingers and looking at sasuke so yeah kakashi's like okay we have one of these oh my god but he suppresses his urges to give Sakura a clean slap across the face and he says, Sasuke, you're up next. And Sasuke does some usual emo Sasuke stuff. He says, uh, my name is Sasuke Uchiha. I don't particularly like or dislike anything. And hearing this, you know, Sakura, she feels a bit bad. And then he says, my goals, they're not goals because I'll make them a reality. I need to kill a certain someone and surpass someone else while glancing at Naruto. You, you know, Team 7 just can't be, you know, secretive. They're always glancing at people, bro. But yeah, Kakashi's like, okay, so we have a little bit of a rivalry. You like to see it. You like to see it. Because that's how people grow, really. So, onto Naruto. When it was Naruto's turn, he said, My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen and fighting and dislike those weaker than me. And someday I'll become the richest and most powerful person in the land. And Sakura burst out laughing like, You really think you'll be able to do that? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Naruto. Oh wait, I already am. <laughs> you know, she continues her, you know, hysterical laughter. And Naruto is just getting a bit ticked off by Sakura. And he thinks he needs to show her a lesson. And Kakashi could feel the tension rising and the world slowly emerge from Naruto's body. And Kakashi could sense something strange, something powerful coming from Naruto but couldn't see anything. Kakashi quickly said, well, that was informative, you three. You guys need to meet me tomorrow. Also, don't eat. And he disappeared into a cloud of smoke. The world went back into Naruto and he just got up and went home while Sakura kept trying to make her advances onto Sakura. Why do I keep saying Sakura? Onto Sasuke, which kept failing. So we skip to the next day and we see Team 7 all under a tree, you know, getting some shade while waiting on Kakashi to arrive. And of course, we all know on his way to meet Team 7, he would stop at the burial ground to mourn his teammate's loss. So Kakashi doesn't spend long and he makes it to Team 7 and he sees them there. So he goes, he greets the team, you know, says good morning, and he starts to explain the bell test. And he says, this is what's really gonna prove if you stay on my team or not. And Sakura was the first to protest. It's like, no, we worked hard to get here. You're not gonna send us back. And Kakashi said, oh, really? And Sakura, you know, she felt like this was a challenge, so she backed down from it. And Kakashi started explaining. There are two bells on his waistband and the first two to grab the bells, you know, move on while the loser gets sent back to the academy and also gets tied to a stump while watching the others eat. So hearing this, Naruto was a bit confused because he has never seen a team of three ninjas. It's always been a Jonin sensei with three students like Yeni and Chunin, you know the deal. So everyone got the rundown of the bell test and were ready to start. So Kakashi said start and Sasuke and Sakura jumped into the woods to hide before fighting, but Naruto, he wasn't like them. And Kakashi seeing this, he's like, oh, so you're the cocky type. So the two had a quick stare down and Naruto ran at Kakashi, you know, trying not to use the world, at least at the start of the fight. So he runs to Kakashi, but Kakashi was completely 
demolishing Naruto. Naruto is a bit you know, more well versed in Taijutsu since you know he's worked with the world. So Naruto does know, you know, what he's doing, but Kakashi, he is way too fast for him. So Naruto, he jumps back to get some distance. And Naruto took a second to get a breather and he says, he's fast, only if I had more time. And then Kakashi, who was running towards Naruto, stopped running and the birds in the sky stopped flying. Naruto looked around and says, I make my own time. All around Naruto, nothing was moving and he had an increased time to do whatever he wanted, three seconds. Naruto couldn't feel the wind, people walking by stopped and when he called out for his teammates, they just stood frozen like statues. So Naruto took advantage of his power and rushed Kakashi and activated his stand and started barraging him with punches and repeated one word over and over. <laughs> Zero. Each time he punches, it leaves a massive crater in Kakashi's body, and when time resumed, Kakashi flew across the training ground and slammed into a tree on the verge of death. The villagers who stopped to watch the fight were dumbfounded. How is that demon so strong? He must have used the Ninetales power. And a group of them ran to Hiruzen's office with the news. Meanwhile, at the training ground, Sasuke and Sakura came out of their hiding, shocked at what Naruto did. They just saw Kakashi go flying and Naruto didn't even move. Sasuke was legit scared at this point of Naruto. What kind of power is he using? It's like he just defeats whoever stands in front of him. Like Kakashi just got sent flying across the map, so I don't know who wouldn't be scared. For Kakashi though, he was messed up badly and had to go to the hospital. So Naruto took the time out and hoisted Kakashi over his shoulders and walked to the hospital. And with every step Naruto made, Kakashi winced in pain, that's how like sensitive his body was at this point. And when he arrived at the hospital, the medical ninjas were surprised at how Kakashi was even alive. So they took him in and began the healing process, but it would take a while. Now, Naruto is beginning to realize the power he can gain from being able to stop time. But how will Naruto use this power? Will he use it for good or for evil? So real quick, I want to get a few inconsistencies from part one out of the way. No one in the comments even figured these out, but as soon as I published the video, I was thinking, wait, none of this makes sense. <laughs> so real quick, um, in the last part, I said only the caster of the Reaper Death Seal can see the Grim Reaper or the Shinigami, which is like half the truth. You know, when the Reaper starts ripping out the soul of the person the Jutsu is used against, they can see it as well. But I'm changing it to where the Reaper can like allow itself to be seen. So that's how Kushina saw the Grim Reaper because she wasn't the caster. So how would she see it in the first place? So that's how I explained that. So yeah, it allowed itself to be seen. And I might do the same thing for um, the world as well. Since it is a part of the Grim Reaper, it is a demon. So I might do that, but I might just leave it up to you. Just leave it in the comments if you'd want the stand to sometime, you know, be seen by other people. Or I may even bring in more stands from the original Jojo series. Okay, geez, almost two minutes and I haven't started the what if. So we start this off in the hospital with Kakashi and, and he's there talking with Hiruzen about you know what Naruto ability could be. And he says to Hiruzen, he was about to have an all out fight with Naruto, but the next thing he knew, he was flying through the air and smashed into a tree. And Hiruzen, he's like sitting at the side of his bed, trying to come up with any possibility to explain like what Naruto can do. Maybe it's a genjutsu. But Kakashi said not possible, Naruto doesn't have that type of mastery of it, even still he has the Sharingan so he would have been able to see through it. So the two were just completely stumped by this, but they have to start out little by little, and for this Hiruzen knew the right person to ask. So we fast forward a day later and Kakashi called in his team, You know, he called in team 7 to tell them what to do while he's recovering. 
So all three team members enter his hospital room and Kakashi is in really bad shape. Almost its entire body is in a cast. And Naruto seeing this, you know, he you would think he would feel remorseful, but Naruto was amazed by his strength of what the world could do. Like just imagine when he gets stronger, but Naruto is pulled from his fantasies when Kakashi starts to speak. He says, you guys can't do any missions without me, that's just the law of the village, but I want you all to start training together. The point of the whole bell test was teamwork, but someone didn't let me explain it due to my injuries and Kakashi said this while staring daggers at Naruto, but continued on. For a team to function, its members need to be a unit, not individuals. And Team 7 yes said together, yes sensei, and bowed. So they left the hospital room and head over to the same training ground from the bell test and they were just standing out there looking at each other not knowing what to do until Naruto sighed and says, we won't get anywhere just standing around, follow my lead. So he walked over to a tree in the forest nearby and activated his stand and Naruto got into a low stance and started punching at the tree but he wasn't touching it. The world was doing all the work, but to Sasuke and Sakura, it looked like Naruto was really like destroying this tree. And while this is happening, Hiruzen and Hiyashi Hyuga were watching, and Hiruzen said, Do you see any chakra movements? So Hiyashi, he squinted his eyes to focus on Naruto's chakra network, and he was surprised. He thought Naruto was using some technique similar to maybe Sanade, where she would use chakra to boost her strength on her fists. But no, like nothing. Naruto didn't have any movements throughout his entire chakra network. It was actually incredible. Hiyashi had never seen anything like it, and he told Hiruzen, I, I, I don't see anything, like, to be honest, I don't know what to make of it, I don't see any movements at all, he has a massive amount of chakra, I mean, figures because he's an Uzumaki, but he isn't using a drop of it. So Hiruzen, he stayed quiet, trying to wrap his head around this, but the more he tries to understand Naruto's abilities, the more confused he gets. So we switch back to Naruto, and with a single punch, he splits the tree into half, and his teammates were impressed to say the least. Sasuke and Sakura wanted to learn how Naruto was doing this, but to ask him, that means that they're admitting that they're weaker, which neither of them want to do. Alright, Sasuke, I get he doesn't want to admit he's weaker, you know, he's an Uchiha, yada yada yada, but Sakura? Sakura doesn't want to admit she's weak. <sighs> Moving on. Sasuke says, I don't need any help from you to get strong. And he turns around and walks away. And this entire time, Sasuke is thinking that when he gets his Sharingan, he can copy whatever Jutsu Naruto is using and make it way better. Foolproof plan, right? No? Okay. So, <laughs> Sakura, she goes and follows her Sasuke-kun to the other side of the training grounds. And she does whatever he's doing. So... So all Naruto does for the time Kakashi's out of commission, he's trying to lengthen the time that he can stop time for. He doesn't know exactly how to do it, like there isn't a book he can just take up and it explains everything, but he's just trying. And what he's thinking is it's as simple as the more he uses it, the more he pushes himself, the longer it'll last. But after 5 days of training, he makes little to no progress at all. But something Naruto does get from all of this training is... He figures out the usefulness of the ability. Naruto can really just stop time, throw a kunai, resume time, and kill someone with zero effort. That might come in handy later. <laughs> wink wink, foreshadowing, uh, what? So on we progress with the story. Kakashi over these five days has gotten a lot better, but he still has to use a crutch to move around. And like in canon, the team goes on many D rank missions to collect garbage, to help elders and farmers, and to catch runaway pets. So this all lasts about two weeks, and by this time, everyone on the team is getting frustrated. Naruto, he isn't being challenged, Sasuke is not challenged, Sakura, she's just mad because Sasuke is mad, and Kakashi, this is pretty boring to watch. So when they're going for their next D rank mission, Kakashi is actually the first one to suggest that Hiruzen give them a stronger mission, not only because he's bored, but he also wants to test Naruto to see what he can do, and over these two weeks, Kakashi has regained basically all functions in his body, he's almost completely healthy. So he doesn't have the crutches anymore, he's ready to leave the village, you know, he's back in business. 
So Hiruzen, he gets what Kakashi is trying to do, so he almost immediately agrees. And he was going to go with a A rank mission, but he has to remember that there is still Genin on the team, so he just picks up a C rank, a quick escort mission that, you know, they could encounter some bad guys on the way, so it could be a good test of Naruto's abilities. So, he tells them about the C rank escort mission, and you know, at least they get to go out of the village. It isn't like assassination or anything, but it's good enough, so. Hiruzen, he calls in Tazuna, and this time he isn't a drunk mess, he's actually, you know, respectable. He comes in, he sees the team, he's a bit, you know, he, he isn't the happiest about having just Genin carrying him, but he did underpay, so he can't really complain. So we fast forward to the next day, and we see Team 7 as well as Tazuna at the front gate, and they're ready to move out to the land of the waves. So they head out through the village gates, and it's gonna be a long walk, so instead of walking in silence, Kakashi, he strikes up a conversation with Tazuna, and he asks him about his family and how long he's been building this bridge, and while he's talking to him, he realizes that Tazuna, he's getting like a bit nervous around Kakashi, like he's giving his... Uh, answers without any confidence he's like oh i've been building the bridge for uh, around uh, a year like he's just being really weird about it it's really simple questions so kakashi that's his first red flag he doesn't know why he's doing that but around 30 minutes into their journey to the land of waves kakashi he sees a puddle of water and this might seem like nothing to the average person but Kakashi realized that they're in the middle of the dry season and it hasn't rained in weeks, so there would not be a puddle. So this is a bit sus. So he decides to walk past it and when the entire group is like almost gone from it, the demon brothers jump out from the puddle. You know, it was a genjutsu. They jump out and try to attack um, Team 7. But Naruto was the first one to realize this and he says... Time slows to a stop and Naruto has two seconds so he quickly goes behind the two demon brothers and takes out his kunais and then he looks at them and says die. He throws the kunai directly in the back of both of their heads and he resumes time killing them on the spot. So Kakashi who was going to go behind them himself, he realized that Naruto has already dealt with it somehow, like what? So he tries to get some information from Naruto like uh, saying, how did you do that? But Naruto, he kept silent and said, don't worry, they're dead. It doesn't matter. So Naruto, he went back up to, you know, go beside Tazuna and continue on while Kakashi, he's just standing there in utter confusion. So Kakashi, he went and sealed both the dead bodies into scrolls and then caught up with Team 7. Meanwhile, he's trying to create a profile of all of Naruto's abilities, so from what he's observed, Naruto has some form of teleportation and quick reaction time because it was faster than his, which is really fast in the first place. So Naruto and the rest of Team 7, they make it further down the path and then soon it's starting to get really foggy. And um, Tazuna tells the group that this is really normal for uh, the Land of Waves. There are a lot of fogs in the area, but this time it seemed thicker than usual. This is like they can't see in front of them. It's that thick. So they continue moving on and then they hear something coming through the air. And then Kakashi quickly yells, duck. But Naruto, he activates his stand and it blocks the sword, breaking the executioner's blade in half. Zabuza who witnessed this is thinking, what the hell is this kid? But he lands on a branch in front of them in the view of Team 7 and he starts going on his monologue and mentions that he was sent by Gato to, to kill the bridge builder Tazuna. And Kakashi, he's wondering why such a high profile ninja is sent to kill a simple bridge builder. But they don't have time to think about that because Zabuza, he jumps down and makes five water clones to rush the group. So Kakashi and Naruto and Sasuke, they all three of them run in front to try and take down these clones, which is way easier, like, it's really not that difficult. Kakashi, he uses a water style jutsu to take down two of the clones almost instantly, and Naruto uses his stand to take down the rest while Sasuke is just left hanging. Zabuza looked over to the team and he seemed surprised at how quickly they took down his clones, and then he realized something and said, 
Oh, you seem familiar. Kakashi Hatake, the copy ninja. And Kakashi smiled under his mask and says, You don't look too bad yourself, Zabuza Momochi. Sasuke turned to Kakashi and said, You two know each other? And Kakashi nodded and said, They've fought before. And Zabuza finished Kakashi's statement and said, Well, this will be our last encounter, Kakashi. And he started to weave hand signs fast, so fast it was like a blur. And he completed the jutsu and from the water around him rose twin water dragons. These two flew towards Kakashi, Naruto and Sasuke and Sasuke seeing his chance to help out, he did a fireball jutsu while Kakashi weaved hand signs for a flamethrower jutsu. It's similar to the fireball but it is continuous so there's just a one long stream of fire shooting out of uh, uh, Kakashi's mouth. Imagine Uncle Arrow using fire breath or just a dragon doing fire breathing. That's exactly what the jutsu is, but it takes up a lot of chakra the longer you like breathe fire. But these two combined were enough to evaporate all of the water in the jutsu and as the steam cleared, Kakashi looked around and didn't see Naruto. He was worried for a second but realized, wait, Naruto, he can literally take me, take me without any issue. So anyone we encounter on this mission, Naruto shouldn't have any problem with. So when the steam cleared fully, from behind Zabuza, Naruto appeared like he teleported behind him and his stand grabbed Zabuza by the neck and started to squeeze down. And to everyone else, Zabuza was being lifted up in the air by nothing. He was just flailing his arms and legs around, just floating and begging Naruto to stop. This was the first time Zabuza has ever uttered any word like that. He's like, please stop, I, I, I don't want to die. And with his last breath, he screamed for Haku's help, but Naruto said, shut up, no one's coming to save you. And the world squeezed down fully and crushed Zabuza's neck, snapping his spinal cord in the process. And Haku, who was watching this, was too, well, intrigued by what even was, like, happening. Zabuza was floating, that's something that would catch your attention. So Haku was too late in saving him. And Haku jumped out of the forest with tears running down his face. And in complete desperation, Haku threw multiple Senbo and Lace with his most lethal poison at Naruto. But before they even hit him, they just bounced off in the air. And Haku blinked for a half a second and Naruto appeared right in front of his face. And he said, so you want to die too? And to Haku, he could sense something demonic. And this made him freeze in fear. And Naruto said softly, Die. And the world brought its hand down and full force and shoved it through Haku's chest. And on the other side, in its hand, it held out his heart still beating and dropped it on the ground. Naruto stepped back and he looked down at you know, Haku's dead body and his body started shaking, like Naruto's body started shaking. And Kakashi who witnessed all of this thought Naruto was sad or crying or something, but the complete opposite. Naruto's body was shaking in excitement. His first few kills, what is it, four now? And he'll promise he'll add more to that list, hopefully a hundred one day. So Naruto walked back to his team and said all relaxed that he just took care of them. And Kakashi, he was impressed but worried at how unfazed Naruto was about killing four people now. Sakura was pissing herself because she knows that if she pissed Naruto off, that could be her next. And Sasuke would be in a fit of jealousy, but he can't help just to be amazed by Naruto's power. Whatever it is, it's something that the Sharingan couldn't compete against. Also, don't take what Sasuke just says as how I feel. After all, Sasuke doesn't even have the one Tomei, so who's he to talk? But anyways, after finishing up all that and Kakashi storing both Haku and Zabuza's bodies into scrolls, they continue on to the land of waves. So they take a short boat trip over there. There was some guy, you know, fishing, so he helped out. And because the guy knew Tazuna, so it wasn't that much of a deal. So they boat out to the um, city and the city was run down like poor, all the buildings were falling apart, the people were on the streets and kids running around with torn up clothes. 
So when they got to the docks, a lot of people were crowding around because they thought this could be their like saviors. And well, they were right. All of them came out of the boat and the people were cheering and saying, please defeat Gato Light. These people were desperate to get rid of Gato from their town because Gato has brought nothing but poverty to the people living here. So Tazuna starts showing them towards his house and when they reach, Tazuna's daughter is there and she's already cooking up some food because you know she had to actually hunt for her dinner. So that's what she's cooking now. She caught a pig. So that's what they're eating and like this was some of the best food that Team 7 has ever had. That Naruto, Kakashi, Sakura, that any of them has ever had in the village. Some could say better than Teyuchi's ramen but hey, hey, I won't go that far. But yeah, she can cook. And while they're sitting at the table, Inari who is peeking around the corner, he's mad at these people for like coming into his house and thinking that they can save them from uh, Gato. Like his dad couldn't even do it and if his dad can't do it, no one can. But as uh, Inari is around the corner, he's listening in on the conversation and Tazuna is saying how like, well, he wouldn't say it in front of Naruto's face, but he's saying how brutal like Naruto was with the people he came across. But he said it in a kinder way. I don't know how you can say someone killed people brutally in a kind way, but somehow he figured it out. So as he's explaining this, Inari, he isn't like, he's starting to get scared of Naruto. If I was hearing all of this, I would be scared too, Inari. You're not alone. After this explanation, they all cleaned up um, all the plates and stuff and for the following days, they didn't really have much to worry about. Whenever Naruto came across one of the thugs in the Land of Waves, he just took care of them there and then. And for Tazuna in his case, they just patrolled make sure that no one came onto the bridge while they were building it and it was sort of smooth sailing from there. So one day after they finished patrolling, it was nighttime and Naruto was on his way back to uh, Tazuna's house. And while he's walking, he gets stopped by Sasuke and Sasuke pulls him off to the side and asks Naruto, how is he so strong? Because Sasuke, he hasn't activated his Sharingan and he's feeling really weak right now. This is probably the lowest point in Sasuke's life. And Naruto, he laughs in Sasuke's face and says, Aren't you the Uchiha prodigy destined to beat me? Well, do it on your own. But as Naruto was walking away, Sasuke fell to his knees and begged Naruto to just help him get stronger in any way, shape or form. He's begging him like, please. And Naruto, he couldn't stop laughing. This was so amusing. But he feels bad for the kid. This is the one time Naruto would feel this way. And he says, get up off the ground. You groveling out my knees, it sicks me. The only time I want to see someone beneath me is when I beat them down. So Sasuke got up and Naruto asked him, does he even know how the Sharingan would activate? And Sasuke, he nodded his head no. And this just made Naruto want to laugh even more. He knows more about the Sharingan than the actual member of the Uchiha clan. So Naruto starts to explain what he knows about it and that he needs to experience some sort of near death situation or just something that brings out a lot of emotion. And Naruto, he has the perfect plan. Well, uh, Sasuke, he was, he didn't know what to do. Like, how would that even happen? But Naruto, he activates his stand and you all know where this is going to go. Naruto starts beating the hell out of Sasuke. Started beating him almost as worse as he did Kakashi. Beating him down until Sasuke was on the brink of death. And that's when his Sharingan activated, but he was too tired and too injured to even use it, so Sasuke passed out. So Naruto, he brings him back to Tazuna's house, and there he rests. Um, similar to how Kakashi, when he was tired, he rested and he got a bit of healing. Because Tazuna's daughter, she knows stuff about herbs, she isn't a healer, but some of the herbs in the forest around them, they're good for, you know, recovering. So after about a day is when Sasuke can walk again and after two days is when Tazuna and his men are almost done with the bridge. But Gata is informed by his men that Zabuza and that guy girl, whatever he wanted to be, 
they failed on their mission to take down Tazana, and this pissed Gato off. Like he slammed on his desk and says, oh, guess I have to do it myself. So he gathered all of his men and they got onto boats and sailed over to the bridge and climbed on and Gato and his massive army faced off against Team 7 and we can all guess how this ends. Gato gets completely annihilated. Naruto doesn't even step into this one. Kakashi and Sasuke take down all of his men with ease. And when it comes to Gato, Kakashi, he lifts him up by the collar of his shirt and throws him down onto the ground. And he's begging for forgiveness, but Kakashi says, oh, I won't do anything to you, but they might. And from behind him, he turns around and sees almost all of the villagers from the Land of Waves lining up to get a good punch in for all that Gato has caused. So Gato is killed by all of the villagers. That's how like, badly they beat this guy up. So we would fast forward another week and the bridge is fully built and they're thinking of a name for it and Naruto suggests the world. And the Tazuna, he's like, huh, that actually has a nice ring to it. I guess we'll call it the world from now on. So all the villagers, well, most of the villagers from the Land of Waves, they see Team 7 off as they walk back to the Leaf Village and thank them for all of their help. But it wasn't just the residents of the Land of Waves seeing them off, but someone in the forest focused his eyes onto Naruto and said, seems like he's one of us. So we start this what if off where we left off with Team 7 on their way to the Leaf Village. Also last time I left off with sort of a cliffhanger and now I don't really know what to do with it because people made it clear that they don't want any more stand users when my plan was to bring in someone like uh, King Crimson or Jojo from you know Jojo's Bizarre Adventures and have a huge fight with them with Naruto nearly losing his life but I guess you all missed out on that because no one wanted it. So I'll just have to change up the entire story and hopefully you guys like it and let's see how that goes. So getting back into the story, Naruto and the rest of Team 7 make their way back to the leaf without any issue and they immediately go to the Hokage's office to collect their reward. So when they enter Hiruzen's office, Kakashi tells Hiruzen that that was definitely not a C-rank mission because they came across Zabazama Mochi. So of course, Hiruzen gives them the proper pay for a B-rank mission and actually apologizes because if it was really any other team than Naruto's team, that could have ended up in the entire team dying. But before they left, Hiruzen told them about the tuning exams and Sakura asked, what are the tuning exams? So Hiruzen, he turns to Kakashi and says, you didn't tell them Kakashi. And Kakashi responds with, he was just going to tell them later on. So Hiruzen, while they're there, he just explains to them that it's a test that, well, are going to test them to see if they're ready to be promoted to tuning. And if they pass the test, well, they get promoted to tuning. And Sakura, she's the only one excited in the group because, you know, she's ready to be promoted and go to even higher ranks, maybe even joining one day. But Naruto and Sasuke weren't that interested, to be honest, but they still wanted to do it because, you know, they had to get everyone in the group's consent to go ahead and join the tuning exams. So before they left, Kakashi advises his team to train for these exams because they're going to be really hard and people from different villages are coming so they really don't know what to expect. So they would take their advice, I mean they wouldn't need the advice, they were going to train anyways, but yeah. We fast forward a day and Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura are at the training grounds but they're all separated from each other, well except Sasuke and Sakura who... Sasuke is trying to get Sakura off of his back because this girl is really slowing down his training. So he stops for a second and tells Sakura to wait here while he does something important. Sasuke, he goes over to Naruto and asks, can you show me how your ability works? And Naruto, knowing Sasuke wasn't trying to learn anything from him, said, sure, but trust me, your Sharingan won't be able to copy it. And Sasuke froze wondering how Naruto knew. But Naruto continues saying that there's just a fundamental truth that he doesn't seem to understand. And that's, I'm better than you, and that'll never change unless you get stronger. 
And as he said that, the world punched Sasuke in the gut and he held his stomach in pain and fell to his knees. Naruto looked over Sasuke and said, I want you to get stronger though. I can't have weaklings for teammates. So, word of advice, revenge isn't what makes you stronger. It's the thought of being weak that pushes you. The thought of climbing to the top. The thought of those who once looked down at you to be at your feet just like you are right now. And he kicks Sasuke back. Sakura seeing this ran up and lifted Sasuke off the ground but as she was going to berate Naruto with insults, Sasuke said, Sakura, stop. Don't you realize you're annoying? And this shocked Sakura to her core as she just stayed there not moving while Sasuke got up and hobbled over to one of the training logs. So they train on their own and after two weeks, they were ready to start the tuning exams. The day before the exams, Naruto was walking down a street in the metalworks district of the village and he saw Sasuke at one of the stands refilling his kunai and ninja stars. So Naruto went up to the same guy and bought some, then turned to Sasuke and asked, are you ready? And Sasuke smirked and said, of course I am. I've gotten way stronger these past two weeks. I bet I can even get one up on you. And Naruto took out his frog wallet to pay and says, I'll be the judge of that. So the two walk back to one of the training grounds to stop and have a quick test of their abilities. And Naruto said, so how are you going to defeat an enemy you can't see? And the world emerged from Naruto's body, its entire body floating behind Naruto. And the world then rushed Sasuke, punching at his chest. But something Naruto wasn't expecting is that Sasuke had raised his hand to block the punch. Granted, it did nothing, and Sasuke still suffered heavy injury, but Naruto was amazed that he could even tell it was coming. So Naruto asked, how did he do it? And Sasuke just responded, ever since I got my Sharingan, I can get a slight read of where your Jutsu is going to attack next. And Naruto turned around and as he was walking away said, you got lucky. So fast forward to the next day and Team 7 is gathered outside of the academy to you know go in and start the tuning exams but before they could even walk through the doors they're being blocked by the amount of genin trying to get in but naruto and the others try to manage to squeeze through and then they make their way upstairs to where the real tuning exams begin and all the while they're being watched by one of the other teams team guy or team nine r.i.p neji and they're watching them all the way upstairs and Neji was first interested by this team because they saw through that Genjutsu really easily, easily. So when they get upstairs, Lee was the first one to approach and ask Sasuke for a fight because, well, Sasuke is, should be the prodigy Uchiha. So Sasuke, he does accept and the fight goes, well, the same as canon. <laughs> Sasuke loses in spectacular fashion and this really taught Sasuke that Naruto isn't really the only one above him. He has a lot more obstacles to face before he can even test going up against Naruto. So after he finished up that, they all went to the actual room where the first stage would begin. But as soon as they enter the door, they see rows and rows of just ninjas just waiting there. And because of the loud noise the door made, they all are now staring at them. And Sakura, she's shaking like, these all can't be the applicants, right? But Naruto, he walked in front of his team and they followed behind and Naruto just said, just keep quiet and mind your own business. So while the three were waiting in the corner for their invigilator to come into the room, they were approached by this guy with silver hair, Kabuto. And he starts to explain to them about the different people here and he's using these, well not really magical cards, but these cards he uses his chakra to infuse some data in and show them some stats about the different people in the room. And after his, well, they, Naruto just saw it as a magic show while people like Sasuke and Sakura were actually interested in like the different people in the rooms and all they've done, like their achievements. And after he went away, Kabuto, he actually checked the Naruto's card and he was amazed by it. Naruto had taken down Zabuza Momochi. That is a impressive achievement. So as they stay there and wait, it's been 5 minutes, then 10 minutes, then 15, then half an hour. And Naruto is wondering when is this gonna start. 
But let us switch to the perspective of Hiruzen the day before. We see Hiruzen in his office talking to the different proctors of the different stages of the shooting exams, or many of them. But yeah, he was telling them that this year the exams are going to be a bit unconventional, a bit different than previous years, because they want to test them on the unexpected. So back with Naruto and his group, they're waiting and Naruto, he's sitting in the building and he could sort of sense something, some danger. And Naruto, he gets up and looks out of one of the windows and from the building, it looks like it's completely dark, like nighttime, but he looks over to where the village is and it's in complete sunlight. So Naruto, he quickly runs over to his team and grabs them both and jumps out of the building and starts running. And when he looks up, there's this massive thing falling and Naruto couldn't explain it, but he knows he needs to run. And other people in the um, same area as Naruto, they followed his suit when they realized the same thing. And basically everyone who would move on to the second stage, they escape while the others stay in the building. So we flash back to the office with Hiruzen and Ibiki asks, so what are we going to do for the first stage? And Hiruzen got out of his chair and looked out of the window behind him and said, we'll have a little help from the Toad Sage, Jiraiya. And Ibiki, he was shocked and said, he's back in town? And Hiruzen nodded and said he completed his mission a, a while ago. So back to the present with Naruto and when he gets out of the range of this thing falling, he looks up and gets a, a proper view of it and it's a massive toad. Naruto, he's confused and so is everyone else outside looking up and then as the toad was about to smash into the building, it poofed into smoke just in time. And Jiraiya, Ibiki and Hiruzen all came out of hiding and he started to explain what this all was. It was supposed to test how they can quickly react to something that they've never really experienced before, like when are you ever going to see a toad falling on you? Those are the ty kind of things that can happen in battle. You never know what the opponent's jutsu are. You, never, you don't know what they can just pull out. So Hiruzen commended Naruto because he was clearly the first to realize all that was happening and the fact that he went back for his teammates when he could have just jumped out of the window himself, he also got some respect for that. But after receiving all of that praise, Naruto made a weird request to Hiruzen. He turned to him and asked, can we just skip all the pleasantries? I want to fight everyone here. And Hiruzen said, yes, we'll get to that. You know, you'll get your chance to fight. But Naruto said, no, I want to fight everyone here at once. Like a 1v10 or however many ninjas there, that type of situation. So Hiruzen, he looks over to Jiraiya for some input, but Jiraiya just shrugs, saying, hmm. So he looked over at all the remaining people and said, I would let you do it, Naruto, but there's just too many people here. We can dwindle them down in the second stage. So Naruto, he accepted this, so they had to move on to the second stage, which would remain the same as the canon. Naruto and the others who moved on would meet up with Anko at the Forest of Death and she starts explaining all the rules pertaining to this stage and how that they are allowed to kill and that they're deadly beasts in the forest so they should probably be careful. And after her whole speech, um, she instructs them to go and collect their scrolls, either a heaven scroll or a earth scroll, it's just given randomly. And they have to... You know, go into the forest, find a team with a opposite scroll to them and bring it to the center where there's a huge building and that's pretty much it. So everyone understands and they collect their scrolls and move to a gate assigned to them where they should wait for Anko's signal to move into the forest. And it wasn't long until they got that signal because Anko blew a loud horn and this showed everyone that you know they should probably run in now. So they do and all the teams run in and Naruto's team, they start jumping from branch to branch and Naruto said to the both of them, I hope you got stronger because in here, there's no one coming to save you. And Sasuke, he said, I've gotten stronger, a lot stronger. While Sakura, yeah, she did train, but it wasn't anything intense. So if she was to come across uh, groups like the Sound 4 or anything, she would basically fare the same as in canon, maybe get an extra hit in. 
Naruto then also says that they need a heaven scroll, so they need to find a team with one. And none of them have sensory type abilities, so we just need to run around and see what we can do. So as the team is jumping from branch to branch, they're going along, they see this single ninja just standing out on their own. And the team stop to observe what they're gonna do. And this person turns around and their necks extends towards the team. And Naruto quickly grabs the back of the shirt of uh, both of his teammates and jumps back to create distance so like the neck thing wouldn't catch up to them. Naruto doesn't even know what this thing is. So after getting back, they start to, you know, think what to do and Naruto says, just leave it to me. So he jumps down and then comes face to face with Orochimaru, but this isn't his normal look because he's wearing someone's face right now. So Naruto doesn't immediately recognize the person, but you know, soon enough from the ability he has. So Orochimaru says to Naruto, bring me my Sasuke. And Naruto, he's weirded out by this guy and he doesn't even know well, what he means by that. But Naruto, he rushes Orochimaru and Orochimaru was actually surprised because Naruto was quicker than he thought. So he dodges because, I mean, he's still faster. And Orochimaru was just going to play around with Naruto like he did with Sasuke, you know, take a few blows and then defeat him. So as Naruto got closer to like hit him, Naruto punched the air in front of him, but then Orochimaru felt a massive fist almost punch through his stomach. He quickly jumped back and his skin started peeling and he held his stomach and asked, what the hell is this kid? I have to deal with him quickly. So Orochimaru opened his mouth and a sword started coming from it and he grabbed it and he ran to Naruto, ready to just cut him, but as soon as he swung towards his head, it just completely stopped in the air, and Naruto said, that's not how that works. And the world grabs onto the sword and he yanks it, pulling Orochimaru closer and then punches him in the head. And this sent Orochimaru flying back, leaving a dent his size in the tree. And Orochimaru, he opened his eyes and said, I have to escape. But Naruto was already running at him and Naruto punched directly in his stomach but Orochimaru he turned into a bunch of snakes and they all slithered away and Naruto said run coward. And since his body turned into snakes everything that Orochimaru had on him it just fell off like his clothes and his scroll and luckily he had a heaven scroll the scroll they needed. So Naruto took that and he put it up into the air showing his team that were watching this entire thing and Sasuke watching he was just inspired really he just couldn't be mad. So Naruto and his team start running to the middle and within an hour they make it and as soon as they get there they open both the scrolls and from it Iruka poofs out and he was surprised that they all made it there this early so he explained to them that they can just wait around for everyone else to get here. So they do and after around a, a long time, like 5 hours of waiting, Gara and his team finally arrive and Gara thought, they thought they did good, like really good. And to see Naruto and his team there and they look like they've been there for a while, like they're comfortable, like sitting back in a chair, they were surprised. So as Team Gara was walking past Team 7, Naruto and Gara both locked eyes and there was a sort of fight between them and Gara was the first one to look away and Naruto smirked and said that's what I thought. So Naruto he waited and waited and when the next day rolled around finally everyone was there. So they all moved over to this room inside the mansion and this it was a wide open area and at one end of the room there was the you know usual ninja hand sign and on the sides there were railing for people to stand and you know watch. So they walk in and Hiruzen is there along with Jiraiya and he starts to explain that there were unexpectedly a large amount of people here so they have to do a quick preliminary exam to knock down the numbers so they can make proper brackets. Well, he doesn't know if he's gonna make brackets because it's probably just gonna be Naruto versus all of them. So behind Hiruzen is a screen with the different names and they're flipping through names and it lands on Kiba versus Naruto. And Kiba, he's starting to sweat because he does not want to go against Naruto. But, I mean, he has to. So everyone else goes up on the stands while Kiba and Naruto remain down there as well as the proctor of the match. 
So once everyone is up and they're both ready, the proctor says begin. So to start off, Kiba, he's trying to go all out before Naruto could try anything. So he says, man beats transformation. And Akumaru turns into almost a perfect clone of him. And he says, fang over fang. So they both start spinning and spinning really fast, creating a sort of drill. And they both rush uh, Naruto. And Naruto, he just stood there with his arms crossed and just standing there and everyone is wondering is he not gonna dodge but as soon as Kiba got close Naruto he disappeared and reappeared at the other side of the arena and everyone was shocked like he has teleportation or something so Kiba he corrected himself and went towards Naruto again but when he got close Naruto he did the disappearing thing again and Kiba crashed into the wall behind him and when he was dazed Naruto he appeared back in front of him and Naruto said Let's just finish this quickly. <coughs> well, that was expected. <coughs> These punches broke almost every bone in Kiba's body, and the Proctor had to stop Naruto midway, and the health you know, ninjas came, the medical ninjas came, and carried Kiba away on a stretcher to one of the nearest hospitals there. So Naruto, he walked back up next to his team and he just waited as everyone else went and finally, when everything was finished, Hiruzen announced the brackets and they weren't like what we were used to, like going up against each other, like, uh, you know, regular brackets from the third stage. But Naruto, he was going to be going up against everyone at once. So... Once this news spread across the village, people were laughing at Naruto. People thought this guy had a death wish or something, but little do they know. So, for the month training period Naruto gets, still Naruto is just trying to increase the amount of time he can have time stopped for, because right now he has increased it to 4 seconds and his aim is for something even higher, maybe even a minute. So we start this what if off where we left off last time with Naruto coming off the month training period to start the third stage of the tuning exams. So during that month, Naruto increased his time stop abilities to 4 seconds and trained his accuracy to the point where it could be comparable to someone with a dojutsu, like that accurate. So the day of the tuning exam comes around and Naruto and the other genins meet up in the middle of the arena ready to go against each other. And the Kazekage, or in this case Orochimaru, since he killed the Kazekage and is now posing as him, he and Hiruzen are watching from the stands and Hiruzen says to Orochimaru, or who he thinks is a Kazekage, Naruto may not seem like much, but he has proven on multiple occasions that his strength and intellect in battle are far superior to even some Anbu in this village. And Orochimaru seemed quite interested in this and that would explain his close encounter with death against Naruto while they were in the forest of death. So Sasuke fortunately this time was early, well not early just on time so we don't have to worry about that and as they were about to start the villagers who were watching from the stands they brought popcorn because they were waiting to see the QB get beat down but unfortunately that's not how it's gonna go. So every one of the Genin, Shino, Sasuke, Gara, Tamari, Shikamaru, Konkuro, Neji, they're all staring Naruto down and he's really unfazed by this. So the Proctor begins the match and Gara launches a huge sand attack at Naruto and Tamari immediately turned to him and said, don't kill him Gara," and he responded, I'm not breaking any rules. And the sand slowly surrounded Naruto and Gara said, sand coffin and clenched his fist close. Blood started seeping out, um, seeping into the sand and Gara began walking off. And Hiruzen was on his feet worried and people in the crowd said, that's it, I thought this would be a decent fight. And Gara, as he was walking, he got teleported back to Tamari and Konkuro. And Gara looked around confused and tried walking back to the, uh, to you know where the audience is, to the stands, but each time he kept getting sent back to his original spot next to Temari and Konkuro. And Sasuke knew only one ninja was capable of doing this, Naruto. So he said, Naruto stop hiding like a girl, and a voice said from behind him, but I'm not hiding. 
and Sasuke spun around quickly to see absolutely no one. And Naruto appeared behind him and said, looking for me. Sasuke turned back around and got punched across the face. Gara saw Naruto and said, why didn't you die? And Naruto laughed and said, are you sure? And he points to the pile of sand and a body, the body turned out to be one of a sand shinobi. And people were thinking, but how? We literally saw him get covered. But Naruto had stopped time and swapped his place with one of the sand shinobi. So Gara started throwing piles and piles of sand at Naruto, but Naruto, he just walked through it, being protected by the world. And then he stopped time and started counting down from four in his head. And he took out a kunai and started throwing them um, in both of Gara's thighs. And anyone really that was a real challenge, you know, Gara, Shikamaru, Sasuke, you know, the real heavy hitters, Konkuro, you know. So after time resumed, these kunais flew into everyone's legs and they fell to their knees because of the immense pain. Like Naruto would rip through their tendons so they basically can't walk without being healed by a medical ninja. So the proctor seeing this, I mean still there were still some people up, Naruto didn't do it to Tamari and Shino. So he quickly teleported behind both of them and used the world to, you know, give them a few punches, nothing to completely put them on death's doorstep because Naruto, they're his teammates, or at least they are in the same village, so he doesn't want to do them too badly. So after this, Naruto thought the proctor would call the match, but he saw that Gara was getting back up, but this time he was mad. And Gara sand started covering his body, and instead of forming the sort of dome around him like in canon, it just covered his body in a huge pile of sand, and when it all fell off, it revealed Gara's half Shikaku state. And he started going on a rampage using this um, his Shikaku arm to knock Naruto around, but of course this really didn't do anything. The stand would block all of the punches. So once Gara swung at Naruto, he would simply jump over it and run towards Gara. Gara tried putting up a sand defense, but the world punched straight through that and sent Gara flying from the middle of the arena to the arena walls, almost sending him through it. So Gara, he was almost knocked out, and Naruto, he went like he stopped time and went to Gara, basically looking like he teleported, and he gave him another punch, knocking him out for good. And Naruto thought this was, well, a good thing, but since Gara was unconscious, this brought out the true Shikaku. And Tamari and Konkuro, who were on their knees seeing this, they got scared and shouted for the uh, Konoha crush to start. So people from the stands, they started falling asleep because they launched a genjutsu while putting everyone to sleep. And Naruto, seeing this, realized the full scale of the attack. And Hiruzen, he looked over to the Kazekage and his disguise fell, revealing that it was Orochimaru. And Orochimaru, he pretended to escape by running up to the top of the arena. And of course, Hiruzen blindly followed him and this trapped him in a four barrier seal launched by the Sound Four. So while Orochimaru and Hiruzen's fight is going on, Naruto, he has to deal with the one tail Shikaku. So this beast emerged and immediately broke down the walls of the arena, unfortunately not going towards the stands because there, you know, Kakashi, Guy, some Jonin, they were dealing with the San Shinobi who were uh, putting these people to sleep. And he released uh, some other, you know, people who would be useful against the Shinobi from the Genjutsu. So Naruto, he has to think of how he's gonna even stop Shikaku and since Naruto doesn't know about the fact that if he just wakes Gara up, he can put Shikaku back into his seal. So the biggest issue with fighting the, the One Tails is its immense size and Naruto only had one idea of stopping this and that's to use his own tailed beast. So the world emerged from Naruto's body and A stopped times and while time is stopped, Naruto enters his mindscape and in the mindscape, time is perceived even slower than the real world so Naruto could be in the mindscape for like half an hour and that would be the 4 seconds that the time is stopped in the real world. So Naruto, he walks up to the Kyuubi's massive cage and he says, Yo Kyuubi, you in there? 
And the QB speaks to Naruto saying he's finally there to ask for his help. But Naruto made it clear that he wasn't asking for any help. The QB is living in his body, so he needs to pay up rent. The QB laughed and said, you'll admit it eventually, but I'll give you my chakra this once. So the Nine Tails chakra begins flowing through Naruto's body and being that the world is a part of Naruto's body, it enhances the world as well. So Naruto, the world grows in size, not immensely to the size of like Shikaku, but to like around All Might size. Well, I'm not sure if you guys watch My Hero, but yeah, around like 8 foot. So Naruto, he has a surprising amount of control over the Kyuubi's chakra and he immediately knows what to do. He draws the world's fist back and it punches the air in front of it towards um, no, Shikaku. And just the pressure from this alone sent shockwaves towards Shikaku and it got knocked over a little bit but it managed to save itself. Shikaku turned around to Naruto and said, what does this pest want? And then he'd shot out wind bullets towards Naruto, but the world kept on punching the air, creating its own form of wind bullet, and he kept on doing this like rapid firing it. So this beat out all the wind bullets from Shikaku, and it hit it in its chest, in its shoulders, on its neck, and eventually on its head, where Gara is, and this managed to wake Gara up, putting Shikaku back into its seal. Then Gara began falling from, you know, because the Shikaku is so high, he began falling but Naruto quickly ran over and used the world to catch Gara. So Naruto, he laid Gara down on the ground and Tamari, who if I didn't mention wasn't struck by any of Naruto's kunais to the thigh, she ran over to Gara and checked on him to check if he was okay and then she turned to Naruto and with some tears in her eyes said, thank you. And Naruto, he said, uh, uh, whatever, I, it didn't matter to me. I didn't care if he died or not. He was just falling, so I thought that was a good thing to do. So Naruto, he walked off, and then he remembered he saw someone attack Hiruzen. So he quickly went up to the roof where the barrier is, and Naruto, he witnessed Hiruzen's lifeless body flop onto the ground. And Naruto, he screamed no to the top of his lungs and then he started banging on the barrier, but Nar it wouldn't budge for Naruto. And by this time, the Kyuubi's chakra had subsided and when finally the barriers fell, they all ran and Naruto quickly ran to Hiruzen and he was dead. He quickly looked towards where the Sound 4 and Orochimaru escaped, trying to see if he could catch up to them to get revenge, but they were completely gone. Naruto couldn't sense them, Naruto couldn't see them, he couldn't perceive them. So Naruto, he returned to Hiruzen, who is now surrounded by his personal Anbu, and they were sad too. I mean, they didn't want to show it, but definitely sad because they were a part of Hiruzen's personal Anbu, so they know him the best. So, Naruto, he went around starting to clear the village of all the San Shinobi, making quick work of them, and this actually gave Naruto some good favor with the villagers because he ended up saving a lot of them who were about to die. And the explosions that were rigged to go off to blow up some of the walls in the village, Naruto, he made sure those did not go off inside the village, or I mean, even outside the village that would destroy the walls. So... After that, Naruto literally cleaned up the village entirely of all the San Shinobi and when he returned to the arena, people were surrounding uh, Gara as he was being taken to a medical facility. And over the next weeks, this would come to light that the sand wasn't actually enemies of the leaf. They were being tricked by Orochimaru. I mean, they were surprised that the Kazakage was dead. And when they figured this out, that's when they tell, told the elders of the village who were now ruling in place of Hiruzen for a temporary you know, time being. While they look for the next Hokage, which they have a good idea of who it's going to be. So after the word was spread that this wasn't really the sans doing, they were being coerced by Orochimaru, hatred for Orochimaru rose in the village because, I mean, they know him as this person who experimented on children. So they already have a bad taste in his mouth. Imagine, what's his name, Shao Tucker from Full Metal Alchemist? The level of hatred for him, the guy who mixed his daughter and a dog into a chimera. I'm sorry if I'm bringing up repressed memories because I sure did repress that memory, but because 
you know all right this is a sneak peek i'm gonna do a video in the future you know discussing something and Shao tucker is gonna come up a non what if video so i mean there's your little sneak peek for that but yeah he came up and i had to rewatch those series lord i am traumatized but yeah i'm getting sidetracked naruto was called into the hokage's office by the elders and he walked in and saw the rest of his teammates sakura sasuke and kakashi and he was wondering what everything was about and that's when they explained their next mission and it was to find the next hokage lady sonade is her last name senju right so, yeah sonade senju so after hearing this, they were each given a picture of what she looked like because they have none of her belongings so they can't use Kakashi's Ninken so that's unfortunate but they must go on, they don't have to wait for any of that. So after that they head out to the village and the first day is spending going around to different bars, restaurants, casinos trying to find um, any intel on where uh, Sonade may be and they came up empty-handed so Kakashi decided to let the team split up to cover more ground and they would meet up in this one city the city is having a festival so they'll meet up there after two days so Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura they go around searching you know to different places showing the pictures and Naruto actually got a lead saying that the last they she was here but she left like a week ago and the person who owned the store they didn't know where she went so Naruto he just had to move on to the next and he didn't get any more useful information um whenever he went to the other stores so after two days, Naruto, he went to this village area that was having the festival to meet up with his team. And when they did meet up, none of them really had any useful information. So after renting a motel, you know, um, Naruto getting his own room, well, all of them getting their own room. They all went to a local bar, like in the town, to get some refreshments to chill. And as soon as Naruto walked into the store, he saw out of the corner of his eye this lady that looked almost exactly like Tsunade gambling and Naruto put two and two together and when he turned, he sees Tsunade, her pet pig, um, Shizune, gambling against, well Naruto doesn't know this, but they're gambling against the owner of the bar that they're in. And of course Tsunade loses, living up to her nickname. So Naruto makes this clear to Kakashi and they all go over to Tsunade and by the time they reach over to her, she, uh, the owner of the store, he's already walking away. So they all sit down next to her and Tsunade immediately re uh, recognizes Kakashi and she asks what is he doing here as well as what are these kids walking around with him for. So Kakashi, he explains the situation in the village and how they were attacked recently and they desperately need her help as not only the leader of the village but to heal some of the people who were injured in the attack. People like even Lee, Lee was still badly beaten by Gara, so he desperately needs her help and she's the only one who can help her. So Naruto, he's watching as they're talking but Tsunade, she seems like uninterested so Naruto he comes up with a proposal she has to come back and lead the village you know do everything Kakashi said that's if he wins in a fight and he won't even lift a finger to her and Sonade she starts laughing like who does this kid think he is does he know who I am bro I can defeat this kid with my pinky so she's like okay all right I, I like those odds so she says meet me outside and Naruto actually obliges going outside and when they are, they start this fight and Naruto, his hands are to his side and Shizune, she's covering her eyes not wanting to see this poor kid get hurt but Sasuke, he's like, yeah, she's gonna get fucked. <laughs> so as Sonade runs towards Naruto, she gets blindsided by a punch by the world, sending her off into the forest in front of the bar and slamming into a tree. Tsunade, she looks up like, what the hell just happened? And Shizune is surprised as well, while the people on Naruto's team aren't actually that surprised because they have really and truly gotten used to this. So, Tsunade, she gets up and tries going at Naruto again, but still gets punched and held back. And she finally forfeits because what even is this force holding her back? She doesn't even know. So Naruto ends up winning and after winning, of course, Tsunade has a bunch of questions but Kakashi, he holds onto her shoulders and says, don't even ask, you won't understand either ways. 
So Sonare, she sort of understands and that evening they actually went back to the village because it wasn't nighttime when they found her. So Sonare, she was already ready to leave because she's always on the go so she doesn't carry much with her. So all she needs is Shizune who has all her stuff and they're really and truly ready to go. So Kakashi, all he does is has Team 7 return to their motels and return their stuff and of course book out. So after this, they head back to the village and all of this journey, there's nothing really happening. They just walk to the village and it takes like a few days. But when they finally arrive, the people are actually really excited to see Sonade because she is the legendary Sonin. That's like if somebody who you look up to in life just comes and strolls by you. I mean, it's a really cool experience. So of course, Sonade, she does her work in the hospitals, healing up almost everyone because there were some life-threatening injuries that she led the medical team into pretty much bringing them back to full health. Even Lee, who we know got messed up by Gara. So yes, yeah, Sonade officially becomes the fifth Hokage and she starts doing her duties almost immediately. So we start this what if off where we left off last time with Sonade bringing some order to the village again after healing some people and coordinating efforts to rebuild the village. After all that stuff, she's actually been chilling in the Hokage's office pretty much in peace. She's just been mainly doing paperwork. So we get to the three year time skip. And during this time, Naruto would stay in the village and continue to train his time stop after two and a half years being able to do eight seconds with time stopped. Also during this time, Kakashi tried making Naruto learn some elemental jutsu, but apart from the ones that every ninja knows like substitution and even chakra control to wall walk, Naruto, that's really all he got. So during all of this time, Naruto had a lot of time to himself and the times he wasn't training. Naruto just thought about different things and one of those being his parents because he does remember um, the world because in this the world is a demon. So when it talked to Naruto all those weeks, uh, it's been a week now, like part one. In part one, he told Naruto about his parents so he was curious about them. So he decided to confront Tsunade about this. So Naruto goes to the Hokage's office and he goes in and sees Sonade just signing some papers. So he asks her if she knows anything about his parents and Sonade kind of freezes for a second because she doesn't know if she should be truthful because Naruto is grown enough. He, she feels like he should know but she continues to keep it a secret telling Naruto she has no idea. But Naruto at this point, having talked to multiple people and having different expertise, he can sort of tell that she's lying. So Naruto, he comes up with a plan and says, Oh, I, I heard there was fighting down the hall, like in the building itself. And Sonata said, oh, are they at it again? So she gets up and goes outside and using this time that she's out of the office, Naruto, he goes around and starts looking through some of her files and Naruto, he's searching, searching and like she's probably on her way back. So Naruto is trying to hurry up because he can't find anything. But Naruto reaches to the very back of the cabinet and pulls out a file with Uzumaki written on it. And Naruto, he quickly puts this behind his shirt and that's when Tsunade walks in and says, what are you doing behind my desk? And Naruto, he just kicks in the drawer and says, Oh, I was just admiring all of this paperwork that you have to do. And Sonata says, Ha, ha, and says, Get out of my office. There was no fight. And Naruto says, Oh, my bad. So he makes sure to keep his, his back away from Sonata and then exits. And as Naruto is leaving, Sonata is like, Why is he acting so weird? But Naruto, he makes it home and when he does, he starts looking through the different files and that's when he figures out about the destruction of the Uzumaki village and the different shrines that have been scattered throughout the land of fire. You know, one's like really far, basically on the border of some other nations, but there are a few on the outskirts of the leaf village, so Naruto decided to check them out. So a few days later, Naruto went to the same shrine that Orochimaru went to retrieve the mask of the Shinigami to revive the first four Hokage. So Naruto, he goes to this shrine and when he enters, he sees a bunch of masks lined along the walls and there was one that caught his attention. It looked like stone, but 
Naruto, he thought it looked interesting, but kept looking around because there were maybe, there were hundreds of masks on the walls. And when Naruto tried to reach for one, it was like a barrier in front of them. He couldn't touch it. So opposite of the door that Naruto came in, there was a stone pedestal with carvings in it. And Naruto goes up to read it and it says, those of pure blood can break the seal, place your hand and it will be revealed. So corny riddles aside, Naruto sees this hand shape um, in the stone. So he, of course, places his hand in it and uses his chakra and pushes like his chakra into his hand. And after that, nothing really happened. Naruto was expecting maybe some light to shine or hair something, but he didn't. But Naruto goes up to take one of the masks and when he actually tries, he's able to touch it. So he takes two off the walls and as he was leaving, he looks at the stone one and decides to take it. It looked different from all the other masks there, so Naruto took it with him. After his little trip, Naruto goes back to the village, gets the training, and this is where we fast forward to the end of the three year time skip. So Naruto is out training and he's like punching boulders to the point where he starts bleeding from his fists and this was really normal for Naruto. So after getting home, Naruto, he walks in and just throws down his stuff and immediately goes to his bathroom to wash off. And after he does, he walks out to get something to eat, but that's when an Ambu appears in his room and says, you're being summoned by Lady Sonade. And Naruto lets out a heavy sigh and says, what is it now? So he quickly rushes to his bed and starts throwing stuff off of it, including the mask he brought back those, what, five months ago? So Naruto, he grabs his kunai pouch and his headband, but as he's leaving, he realizes that there's these tendrils coming out of the stone mask he brought back. And Naruto, he had really forgotten about the mask. And actually, he didn't wash his hands like perfectly because he still had some blood on it and that's what activated the mask. So as the saying goes, curiosity killed the cat because Naruto, he was curious and puts this mask on his face because he's actually never tried them on. I mean, he doesn't know why, he just thought he would keep them as a souvenir. So Naruto, he puts it on and then these tendrils dig into his head and Naruto tries ripping it off, but it's on for good and he can't get it off. Naruto, he's screaming, he's throwing himself all over the ground and then he stops moving for a second. Naruto is trying to fight the effects of the mask and Kurama's chakra is beginning to bubble around his body, but he falls unconscious. Naruto wakes up two days later in the hospital with Tsunade using her medical ninjutsu on him and Naruto shoots out of the bed sticking to the ceiling and Naruto he's confused what's going on but Tsunade tells him to calm down. So he does and he lands in the hospital bed and Sonata looks at Naruto and he's completely different like his looks, his hairstyle changed, he's gotten taller, a lot buffer, just a similar look to Dio in general. So Sonata begins to explain that her Ambo found him unconscious in his room and Naruto, he's beginning to remember what happened. He's starting to remember the mask attaching to his face and you know, re remembering this, he's touching his own face but it's just fine, no mask on him. And Naruto, he's really confused but he also remembered Sonata calling him to the office so he asks her about this and she sorta has a sad demeanor after he acts and says, Gara has been captured by a group called the Akatsuki. Based on Jiraiya's extensive reconnaissance on this group, we have a list of their members and Tsunade takes out a list and shows Naruto the two that took Gara. So I'm doing this because Jiraiya didn't show up the entire tuning exam arc and during this time he's just been collecting as much information as possible on the Akatsuki, their abilities and members and trying to come up with a way to defeat each of them. So Naruto took the picture from Tsunade and said I'll go and Tsunade, she says like hell you are, you just woke up from a concussion and Naruto said oh, I'm fine and walks out. Sonade, she grabs onto Naruto and says, I already sent the rest of Team 7, they'll be able to deal with it. And Naruto releases his hand from her grip and said, no, I'll deal with it. And Naruto's stand appears behind him and grabs him and jumps out of the building, flying towards the sand village. 
Yes, after four parts, I finally have the stand leap thing that looks like flying in the anime because I literally found out 10 minutes ago that they weren't actually flying. So yeah, fun fact for anime only JoJo fans. So Naruto is quote unquote flying through the air at ridiculous speeds and you might be wondering it's midday, well how is he out when he's a vampire now? Well this is me not trying to come up with BS so Naruto doesn't have the sunlight weakness. <clears throat> So when the mask grabbed onto Naruto, Kurama's chakra seeped into the mask, giving it the same effect, but to a lesser, a really lesser extent, to the Super Aja, which was used in the show to get rid of a vampire's sunlight weakness. So we're back and we switch perspectives to Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakura. They're all walking through the sand making their way to the village when Sakura she sees something gold flying through the sky and she turns to Sasuke to make him look but it's already gone and he asked uh is the heat getting to you Sakura and she says uh, my bad I, I guess it was nothing. Also I know I keep cutting into the story but this is really important. Quick update, Sasuke and Sakura, quick update on them. So Sasuke has his three Tomoe, as well as most of the Jutsu he would have gotten from learning from Orochimaru since he trained under Kakashi, even improving some of his Jutsu. And Naruto was a huge motivation for this because he wanted to be comparable to him, but we all know that's not gonna happen. And Sakura would progress like her usual Shippuden self, training under Sanade, learning medical ninjutsu, yada yada yada. So yeah, back to, back with Naruto. He zoomed past his team and he's flying towards the sand village but from below, Naruto sees the fight going on between Konkuro and Sasori. Naruto lands really close to them and this kicks up a lot of sand distracting Sasori and Konkuro uses this opening and used his massive lizard looking puppet to bite into Sasori's like outer puppet shell breaking it. But he escaped without injury and Naruto gets up and looks over to Conqueror and walks over to him and when he gets close enough he says you're having trouble beating a piece of wood and Conqueror says shut up how about you try taking him on and Naruto smirks and says gladly. Sasori says, uh -huh, the leaf sent you, I hope you're a decent challenge. And he brings out the Kazekage puppet, while Naruto says, your dumb tricks won't work on me. And Naruto disappears and reappears behind Sasori and shoves his fist through his puppet body and grabs his, you know, heart thing, it's not really his heart, it's literally like a cylinder containing his chakra. But anyways, Naruto says, oh, this looks important. Hopefully you won't need it and crushes it in his hand and Sasori's body drops like a fly and Naruto says to Konkuro, it was that simple. And Konkuro started arguing about how he used some weird jutsu to get behind him but Naruto ignored all of this and just walked over to him and he says, are all your puppets sealed? And Konkuro says, what does it matter? But then Naruto grabbed him and the two of them flew off into the sky, well quote unquote flew off into the sky into the sand village. So when Naruto lands, San Chunin and Jonin all you know go around and surround the area he landed and when the sand settled, you know the dust and debris settled, they see that it's a leaf ninja escorting Konkuro back. So they're like oh okay and they you know take Naruto to a room to stay for a bit but he doesn't want to be crammed in the room so he's just like chilling outside really. He has nothing to do until Kakashi and the rest of them get there. So while Naruto is just around, he's you know, waiting for his team, Tamari sees Naruto and walks up to him kind of confused like why is he out here? And she says this to Naruto and Naruto says, isn't your brother captured? I thought you'd be more grateful to see me. This is what, the second time now, right? And Tamari started stuttering and couldn't come up with any words and she just bowed her head and said thank you and ran off. And Naruto leans against the wall and says, stupid girl. 
So that day, but later on, the rest of Team 7 arrived and the shocks on their faces when they see Naruto was absolutely priceless. Not only because, I mean, Naruto was there, but his physical appearance is strikingly different. And they're just confused how that could happen in the matter of two, three days. But anyways, Naruto and the rest of Team 7, as well as Konkuro and Tamari, all gather together and, you know, talk about where Gara could be and possibilities of finding him. And that's where Kakashi suggests using his Ninken. That was really his plan all along because that would give their best chance at finding uh, Gara. So while they're having this little meeting, the elders come up, this being Lady Chiyo and I don't remember her husband's name, but yeah, those two. And when Lady Chiyo sees Kakashi, she does the usual thinking he is the White Fang and she like runs at him but this time Naruto is the one who blocks Lady Chiyo from putting even a finger on Kakashi and Naruto says to them, if you want to live out the rest of your years, you better not lay a finger on him and back up. So Lady Chiyo, she felt a chill run down her spine hearing this and she immediately backs up. The first few steps were really out of fear of Naruto. So after uh, that all happened, Kakashi, he sends out Pakun uh, with, uh, you know, after getting a scent of Gara, he sends him out and he takes like a day to come back and when he does naruto and the rest of team seven are ready to go but also is lady chio and naruto he isn't too fond of lady chio coming along so he goes to pakun and asks you know what's the general direction of where they have gara and naruto says good so he grabs pakun and he uses his stand to grab the rest of his teammates and the stand jumps off with all four of them in tow towards Gara, And Lady Chiyo seeing this is wondering, what the heck? What kind of jutsu does the leaf have? Is it like the land of stone where they can fly? But obviously that's not the case. So Naruto, this jump is going to shorten this whole journey by so much. It's gonna take like a minute actually. So they all jump and they reach right outside of the, uh, right in the valley where the cave entrance to the Akatsuki's thing is happening. And the Akatsuki just started the extraction like five minutes ago. So it's barely anywhere. So Naruto, he sees this bowler and Kakashi, he's explaining how this is a seal and there's no way they can get through it. But Naruto, his stand comes out and freaking punches around the boulder, like crumbling the structure of the cave and this breaks the seal, giving them an entrance to get in. And when they're in sight of all the members of the Akatsuki, Pain looked over to Itachi and Kisame and said, I thought I told you to protect this place. And Itachi, he was confused as well because they didn't sense them coming. So Hitachi, he explains this and, and uh, Pain, he's just like, whatever. This is your mess to clean up, Dera. Do it well. And all of the, it's not really holograms, but their projections of themselves all disappear, leaving just Dera in the room. And this is gonna be a field walk. Naruto doesn't even intervene in this match, it's just Kakashi and Deidara. And them being in an enclosed space, this restricts Deidara a lot on the type of explosives he can use because he can easily collapse the entire cave. So Kakashi, who now has a better handle on his Mangekyo ability, the Kamui, he does this to Deidara and traps him in his dimension you know, completely defeating that threat without much trouble. Meanwhile, Pain and Conan are in the land of waves and Conan asks him, you think he can do it? And Pain says, of course not. We had Zetsu spy on Naruto for three years and you and I know how strong he is. And he looks like he's gotten a lot stronger. Conan says, well, what do you suppose we do? And Pain stops for a moment and closes his eyes like he's sent something. And then he says to Conan, it seems we have a visitor, our old sensei. And Conan was confused and said, wait, him? And Payne nodded his head and said, get ready for a fight. So we switch perspectives to Jiraiya and like I mentioned, he has gathered a lot of information on the Akatsuki. 
And after getting the news of Hiruzen's death, Jiraiya felt like he could never show his face in the village ever again without a victory for the leaf. So he decided to get go at it alone. But the ninjas who were working with him all this time tried stopping Jiraiya, tried convincing him, but there was no changing his mind. So they sent a messenger bird to the leaf to inform Tsunade because Jiraiya is going up against the Renegon, said to be the eyes of the gods. So we go back to Naruto and Team 7 and they bring Gara back to the sand and the medical ninja there you know, heal his wounds he sustained from the battle with Daedara. So with Gara's condition stable, Team 7 was really ready to head off. But the people of the village insisted they stay for a feast and I mean they aren't gonna pass up free food. So Team 7 goes to this massive hall with a table there and food lining the tables and there were many high ranking members of the Sand and the, uh, Tamari and Con Konkuru. So Team 7 started chowing down and Naruto is like Luffy, swallowing the whole chicken and spitting up the bone. And people were shocked with Naruto, but with a body like his, I guess it takes a lot to maintain it. So after Naruto and the others were stuffed, they were ready to get on their way. And Naruto, he's walking out, but Tamari runs up to him and says, please, can I come with you? And Naruto looks back and says, why? And Tamari begins to confess that you've saved both of my brothers and I feel like I should repay you. But one of the members of the Sand Council comes to Tamari and says, no, we need you in the village, Lady Tamari. But a voice chimes in and says, she can go. And everyone looks to where it's coming from and they turn and see Gara holding a crutch to you know, keep him upright. And seeing this, Tamari and Konkuro run over and give Gara a massive hug, seeing that he's okay. And Gara says, oh, okay, okay, no more hugs, you're gonna kill me. So they both back off, you know, chuckling to themselves. And Gara looks to Tamari and says, Now I get why you hated when we left the leaf. And Tamari covered Gara's mouth and says, Yeah, because the food there is amazing. And then she runs off to catch up with Team 7 because they weren't sticking around for all that talking. You know, they had to get back. So Naruto, he's about to walk out of their village gates and Tamari catches up with them. And Naruto says, oh, You again, why are you so persistent? And Naruto grabs Tamari's hand and she turns red like a tomato and says, Don't you think we're going a bit too fast? But then they all flew through the air towards the leaf and Team 7 makes it back in no time. So once they're there, they go to Sonade to tell her of the news. But as they walk into the office, they see Sonade crying over a piece of paper. And Kakashi asks, is everything okay, Lady Sonade? And she jumps up and, you know, she turns her back to the team and says, uh, yeah, everything's fine. I, I know you all just came back from a mission, but... I have another one for all of you. Jiraiya is currently fighting the leader of the Akatsuki and Sasuke said, well, what's holding us up? No, let's go now. And Naruto butts in and says, you can all stay. I'm fine going by myself. The Akatsuki probably won't be too happy that we interrupted their rituals, so they might attack here. And Sasuke tried butting in, but Naruto said, Sasuke, be quiet for once. I've seen personally how much you've grown over the years and know you can take care of the village. So Naruto walks out of the room and Tamari runs behind him and pleads to go with him. But Naruto says she'll just slow him down and Gara would kill him if anything happened to her. And with that, the world grabbed Naruto and jumped off. While he was flying through the air, the world said, You're getting soft, Naruto. Might be because of that girl. And Naruto said, Shut up. But the world continued, Do you really want to be lonely forever? And Naruto says, You and I both know the abilities of this mask. When I put it on, I got visions of what I'd be capable of. And including that is immortality. What's the sense of having a family if I'll outlive them all? And the world kept silent, and the two arrived in the land of rain. And Naruto crashed into the tallest building there and almost got crushed by a massive rhino. 
Naruto got up and saw Jiraiya fighting off the paths of pain with toads attached to his shoulders. Naruto was confused, but I guess it's one of his jutsu. So Naruto stopped time and went to the animal path and sunk his fingers into its chest and tried sucking its blood, but it had none. It was like a corpse. So Naruto used the remaining three seconds to think of how a corpse could be alive, but a, a similarity, I can't speak, a similarity between all of them is the chakra rods, and Naruto took them all out of the animal path, and when time resumed, the animal path dropped to the ground. And by this time, the other path noticed Naruto, and someone went to attack him. But Naruto disappeared again and both the human and Preta path dropped dead and after only a few seconds, Naruto appeared beside Jiraiya with a whole pile of chakra rods and he dropped them in front of him and the Deva path, which was the only one still up, looked at Naruto and said, how, how is this even possible? And Naruto looked at the Deva path and used one of Dio's lesser known abilities or well, lesser shown abilities in the anime, Hypnosis, and appears in front of the Deva path and grabbed its neck and paid Pain tried using Almighty Push, but this didn't phase Naruto at all. And he transferred his cells into a flesh bud and it latched onto the Deva path. And Naruto looked into Pain's eyes and said, Take me to the person controlling you. And Pain nodded and walked mindlessly to the actual body of Pain. And Jiraiya was surprised to see Conan and Nagato and he was fighting back tears to see that this is what his students turned out to be. But Naruto wasn't as sympathetic. Naruto asked for them to explain their plans and after getting what he needed, he killed Nagato with one swift move. And Conan was going to step in but Nagato using his last breaths said, Stay back, you'll be fighting a losing battle. Conan was going to say something in return but Nagato cut her off and said just take care of my eyes for me and go off on your own, the Akatsuki's no more. Then Naruto started sucking out the blood out of Nagato's body, killing him and Conan began crying and Naruto said to Jiraiya, I guess this is when we leave. Jiraiya nodded but asked how are we gonna get back to the leaf and Naruto, without even answering him, just grabbed onto him and his stand, you know, the world, jumped, carrying the both of them back to the leaf village within seconds. So once they get back, Jiraiya is taken to the hospital and is badly injured from his fight. And Tsunade, who comes into the hospital to take care of Jiraiya, she confesses that she couldn't love anyone else after Don's death, but she doesn't want Jiraiya to meet the same fate and she wraps Jiraiya into a deep hug. So two weeks later, Itachi arrives in the leaf village and he isn't here to fight or anything. He just gives himself up and is restrained by some of the Jonins in the village and taken to Ibiki where he puts him in jail. So because of the Akatsuki you know, disbanding, the members just left and went about their lives really. But Naruto was tasked to take them all down and the only real difficult part of this was finding them. But after two months, all the members of the Akatsuki except Zetsu were no more. Sasuke would eventually learn the truth about the Uchiha massacre from Itachi and Sasuke was livid. He wanted to kill Donzo there and then. But Itachi, he had a plan to make Sasuke even stronger the eye transplant to give him the mangekyo and they both agreed to it and with Sanade there to heal both of their eyes they went through with it and Sasuke gained the mangekyo Sharingan giving him abilities like Amaterasu and uh, Susanoo. So with this newfound power one night Sasuke went to take care of Donzo for good killing him and after a really long fight Sasuke came out on top of course, he was jailed, but after the truth spread to everyone in the village, he and Itachi were released. So, with Zetsu's mission failed, no more Renegon and Orochimaru nowhere to be found, the village entered a new era, an era of technological development. People lived longer lives and soon, being a shinobi wasn't really the only thing children aspired to be. There were scientists, there were doctors, there were a bunch of fields. Still, yeah, shinobi were very much needed. I mean, there were fights going on all the time, so the leaf needed 
It was sort of their army, but you know, with magical powers. <laughs> and Naruto would always be the head of these teams going out to fight. And eventually when Tsunade retired to live out her life with Jiraiya, Naruto became Hokage. And he would remain in power for years and years since he doesn't age and he would always be in his prime. No, Naruto would live on as sort of the permanent Hokage because they just never had a reason to replace Naruto. He was far stronger than anyone in the village, so it made sense to keep the strongest one in power. But a race from outer space would challenge Naruto's ascent to the top of the leaf village, the Otutsuki. But we're getting into Boruto territory, so that is where I'm going to be leaving this one off. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. And if you liked it, like. And if you like my content in general, consider subscribing. Also, also guys, huge announcement. I have merch. You guys can check it out. The link is in the description to the merch store. We have shirts, hoodies. We have even stickers. And the design I made myself, it looks pretty cool. Not going to lie. So do check that out. Link, again, in the description. And with that all said, I'll see you guys in the next What If.